Uh, hello, my name is Lisa Stroud. I'm a 70-year-old transgender woman. My pronouns are she, her. Um, the past two years, I've had the best two years of my life. I'm now in the uh, TV and film industry as well as the fashion industry. I do fashion shows. Unfortunately, I can't do them anymore because I just became an ACTRA apprentice, so it conflicts with the union. But I'm allowed to do still uh, fashion photography. I'm a very blessed person with the support system I have around me, and um, I'm basically waiting until my next new movie comes along. I've been, I was born and raised in Hamilton, Ontario. I ended up going to work at one of the biggest um, steel companies in Hamilton. I worked for DeFasco at the time. I think it's called Marcel Mattel or whatever it is now. I spent 35 years there. Unfortunately, the first five years were good. The remaining 30 were hectic. I was uh, verbally abused. They found out who I am, what I am. Uh, at the time, there were 17,500 employees when I started. I was on every single bathroom wall throughout the entire company. I was verbally abused and my vehicle was broken into numerous times. And then in 1998, I had a near fatal accident. I ended up falling 25 feet off an extension ladder and I ended up breaking both elbows, wrists, and my knees. I ended up with 16 operations, and I was out of work for 61 months. Once I recovered, I went back to work for a brief, uh, maybe just over a year. They put us in a rehab shop because I couldn't go back to my old job. I was a pipe fitter, gas fitter, steam fitter, plumber. But they put me in this rehab shop, which I really, really liked. We were just repairing tools and whatever. But after the little over a year, the boss got side, side uh, swiped or whatever, and a new boss came in and he ended up shutting down the, the shop I was in. They decided to send all the work out, outside to a, a company other than DeFasco. Um, so they basically said, uh, go home, don't call us, we'll call you. And then it wasn't long after that, I got a registered letter from DeFasco stating, as of this date, you are now retired. And it freaked me out in the beginning, but I, 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 may, I, may, I managed. Um, I, do, I was doing a lot of plumbing and that on the side, but other than that, I've been retired for like 17 years now, up until the last two years with the film and TV industry, which is unbelievable. It's the happiest time I've ever had. I knew about myself at a very young age. I can go back to when I was four. I talked to my sister many times and she said, no, you were three. Mom and I caught you in our clothes when you were three years old. <laughs> I always felt there was something wrong, but I always had this strong urge inside of me that there was something wrong inside me. I'm in the wrong body. I knew that I should have been a girl all along. I was married, oh God, I was married. We dated for three years, then we, were married for almost 10. And then finally I asked my my wife at the time for a divorce. And we had a very amicable divorce, very amicable. To this day, after 37 years divorce, um, my son and her are my, be my best friends and biggest supporters. But it right after I got divorced, I actually met the love of my life. His name was Larry. And we hit it off. We, <laughs> it was the best relationship I think I had ever been in. And to this day, I miss him. He was totally upfront and honest. He had AIDS. 
I told him that I want to be Lisa. And there were many a times, he was the major d' and manager at the Royal Canine. And like I said, I worked at DeFasco and I don't know, we, we met in a gay bar and this was 1987 and we hit it off and he just lived around the corner from me. <laughs> it was great. He wanted to move in right away and I went, whoa, time out, Larry, no, 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 let's see where things go first. So we, we sort of dated for a year and it went, it, it worked out because we ended up moving in together. But as time went on, I noticed the big change because of his AIDS. And over a long period of time, it, it went to his brain actually. And he actually ended up passing away of AIDS. And to this very day, I, I think about him. I have one thing at home in my apartment that I, um, I have just before leaving my apartment, I always, and hit, I kiss my hand. Oh, sorry, I miss him, I really do. And every time I'm in Toronto, I always go to the AIDS Memorial because his, I had his name put up on one of the plaques there. And I just recently saw him because I, uh, I was in Toronto promoting a PSA that I was just involved in and it was about dementia of all things. And I had to go talk to him and have another cry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've known about myself all my life. And the funny thing is, I've been acting all my life, which I didn't realize. I pretended I was a boy and I knew I was a girl. I've never been happier in my life now. I'm finally who I should have been all my life. And he, it's funny because my, uh, I hate calling her my ex, Deb, and my son, Lewis, they tell me, we've never seen you so happy. And I, I thank them all the time. I, I am so blessed having them being my biggest supporters and best friends. Um, the, the hardest thing, my son was only, I think he was going on four years old when we got divorced. And I was afraid. I think that's one of the reasons I waited so long. I wanted to wait for him to sort of get a little older. But in the meantime, I just remembered, I did start hormones in 1987. I ended up going to the Clark Institute in Toronto and I met three other girls from Hamilton because every week we'd have to go in for a meeting. I hated the doctor. I hated him. He was an old, old guy. The, the younger doctor I liked. But we had to go in every week uh, for a meeting. And at the beginning, there were about 25 of us, 24, 25 of us at the meeting. We were the first group. And I, I went for almost five years. But around the third year mark, I started getting phone calls. I became really close with them. We all did. There were a couple of the girls that had already gone through the surgery. Oh, excuse me. And all of a sudden, I started getting a couple of phone calls through some of the girls. They said, did you, so, did you hear what happened to so-and-so? And I'd say, no. Did you happen to hear what happened to so-and-so? No, I didn't. I, whatever. They said, they ended up ending their lives. And then I found out later, they lost their job, their kids abandoned them, their families disowned them and all this stuff. That's when I woke up. I stopped hormones. I took a big step backwards. And what went through my mind, my son was only almost four years old and I didn't want that to happen to me. I mean, my, Deb, she knew all about me about my cross-dressing. She didn't know the, the, the true feelings inside that I wanted to be Lisa all my life. So I just, I backed off and I just carried on dressing up. May 23rd, 2007, that's when I was forced to retire. From that day on, 
I dressed as Lisa full time, except for when I went out with my son. I didn't, I didn't want to embarrass him and all this stuff. But then as time went on, I waited until 2016. I finally contacted my doctor. And it's really funny because I didn't tell her that I was trans or wanted to change, transition. She said, you got something to tell me. And she told me, you're transgender. And I said, how the heck did you know? I love my doctor. She's the best thing ever. I keep telling her, please don't leave. I love her that much. She is a, the best doctor I've ever had. And we have great conversations. And she's been a big help with me. They made me go to Cam H. I hate Cam H. They wasted almost four years, three years of my life. They wanted to make sure that this is what I wanted. And I argued with them. <clears throat> Finally, they agreed. So they set up an appointment. Actually, there's a clinic in Toronto. It was right when it first opened uh, at the women's hospital. So I went in and I saw the surgeon. I saw the, the nurse and the counselors. The meeting went really well. And I thought, oh, great. I, I wanted to go to Baltimore. But right then and there, that's when COVID hit. And the doctor in Toronto said, you're better off going to Montreal because we just opened up and right now we're doing maybe one surgery a month. We're trying to get funding through the government. So I had to call Cam H back. They sent out a new letter with Montreal and the new doctor. <clears throat> so in 20, 2019, I got a phone call from Montreal giving me my date and I was happy, happy, happy and I couldn't go for another six months because of COVID and I, I was driving me nuts and then finally I went in in uh, early 2020. My son drove me and uh, I told him, he came back, I, I forget how long I was there, 10 days or whatever. I said, come back on the ninth day, get a hotel. You're not coming, picking me up, turn around, going home. Get a hotel and then you'll get sleep and then you can take me home. So that's what he did. So that was fantastic. But I've known that I've wanted to be Lisa all my life. And the first thing I did right after the surgery I lifted up the covers and I went, yay, it's gone, finally. <laughs> and since that day, I've been, oh, it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life, other than having a child. So, uh... From uh, now, it's been almost 19, 20 months ago. I was supposed to meet a friend mid-afternoon. I live in Hamilton, we call it the mountain. It was up on the mountain. Uh, we were gonna go out for coffee and I was there early, I'm waiting. There was a little bench out in front, so I'm sitting on that and then all of a sudden this, I mean, big, big guy. He literally assaulted me. He groped me, he penetrated me. Like, I, I totally lost it. I just, I panicked. I didn't know what to do. And it's usually about a 15, 20 minute drive from where that happened to my apartment. It took me over an hour. I cried the whole time going home. Once I got into my, my apartment, I just broke down. I didn't leave my apartment for four months. I didn't say a word to anybody. The only time I went out is if I had a doctor's appointment or I, I live right near a Fortino, so I would, I was very cautious just going out in public. And then every, about every three months I have an appointment with my family doctor. And when I went in, I, I, I guess I had that look of distraught. She asked me what happened, and I told her. 
And she asked me if I told anyone. I said, no, I haven't told her. I haven't told a soul. Long story short, the police were at my apartment. They spent about three hours with me and I was a basket case. And then a detective got a hold of me and then the victim services police department got a hold of me. And they did get a partial video of the person, but I haven't heard anything yet. I, I, I had to go up to the police station. They, they showed me pictures and like I, I gave a pretty good description, but as of this date, nothing's come of it. But after that, that is when my new second career took place. I answered an ad on Facebook looking for extras. And that was about two years ago. And then I went and then all of a sudden I got the bug. I ended up in my first movie. It was called Pink is In. It was a comedy on a dysfunctional woman's prison. Long story short, the person that produced it, who played the main character is Ruby, Ruby LaRue. He was my neighbor right across the street, him and his husband. Ah. From that day on, I've been in seven movies. Unbelievable movies. I was in Euphoria as a silent auction. I was in Witch Mountain. I was in Painkiller. I was in Glamorous with Kim Cattrall from Sex and the City. I was in Law and Order, Criminal Intent. And then the one that's coming out in August, it's a I'll be on the big screen. It's an action-packed movie called Good Grades Trapped. I can't wait for that because my son and my, and Deb and myself and a few friends, we're gonna go to it. It was unbelievable. And I'm talking major action-packed. I'm talking SWAT, FBI, uh, Philadelphia police, because that's where it was supposed to take place. Lots of gunfire, blowing up limousines and all this stuff. So yeah, I spent four days on that. And then I just finished up doing a, um, a PSA on dementia. And I played one of the lead roles, I played the wife. And one of my very good friends played the part with dementia. And we're in the process of, um, they're in the process, the producers, they're editing it right now. And it was called Help Us Remain. And I'm, I'm waiting for my next role to come along. I love being in front of the camera and being on set. It, oh my God, it's just so much fun. I never knew I had this in me. In Hamilton, we used to have like five or six gay bars where we only have one now. But I mean, there are other establishments that are very uh, gay friendly. They accept us. And which is, it's, it's very good, it's wonderful. But no, I couldn't wait to get home. To be, I mean, I hated having to go to work and dressing up in, you know, work clothes and all this other stuff. I just wanted to come home, become her and go out. But back then I, I had my partner. We, I mean, his schedule was, practically the opposite of mine because he like I said he was the maitre d and the manager at the uh, Vinton's at the Royal Connaught it was upscale restaurant like he went to work in a suit and tie oh my god he six foot four French Canadian <laughs> he was a little younger but oh my god but there were times when our our uh, times together matched, like he'd be off or something would come up and we'd be together. <clears throat> if I came home and he could sense that I had a crappy day at work, I'd be sitting on the couch or whatever, he'd just nonchalantly get up, go into the bedroom, put something out on the bed. He'd come out, give me a nudge. He says, go get cleaned up. I'm taking you out. I miss that. I miss that a lot. Or he'd say, I got tickets for the theater. 
we're going out for dinner and then the theater. And I'm, oh my God. Those are things I miss. And I really haven't been with anybody since. Nobody. I got involved in our community a while ago. I've done a few speaking engagements. I missed a couple because of the filming industry. Um, I've, I've been talking to a few younger transgender people that I've met just recently. I'm gonna say the last six months. I've had coffee with two of them. One is super, super shy. She, she hasn't transitioned yet, but I told her, I said, if you need any advice, if you need any help, please feel free to call me. She's starting to warm up now. I'll call her, she, she's not there yet, but I knew she was trans right, the, right when I met her. I could sense, I don't know, we got gaydar, I know. <laughs> but yeah, I've been talking to her now. She's asking me questions and I'm giving her the best advice that I know because when I started this, I'm 70 years old. I had nobody to talk to, nobody. I did a lot on my own. I didn't even know what the word transvestite meant until I opened a book. I think it was my brother's. My brother is 81. It's when we were living in my parents' house. He had some stashed, uh, what do you call it, penthouse magazines or whatever. And I happened to see transvestite. I didn't know what that meant. I looked it up, I thought, oh my God, that's me. That's me. And it took me a long time to figure out what transsexual meant or transgender. And I'm going, oh my God, that is me. <laughs> I'm trying to help out. I'm trying to pay back or play it forward with the people that are coming up now. I've, all I can say is that I am so blessed. I'm so happy and I'm hoping that I can help out whoever I can. And I've met some younger, a uh, younger group and uh, a few of them have actually approached me and they come up and they go, are you transgender? And I said, yes. And then all of a sudden the questions start pouring out and I said, if I can help you, I can. I said, I know a lot of connections in the city. If you need help, I do. Like legal, I can get it done for free for you. Um, there's, I think there's two youth groups in Hamilton still now. I know who runs them. I said, if you want their names, I'll call them and I'll give them, you know, I, I always ask permission first. You just don't go ahead and do it and I, I'll, I'll set it up for you, but just don't let me down and not show up. If I'm gonna do this for you, you gotta do that for me. I just wish my voice sounded different. I'm working on it. I did start, um, my doctor got me involved uh, voice training. I was going to McMaster. I went for like six, seven months. COVID hit. I haven't been back. And I was doing really well, so I got to get back to that. Let's talk through your diaphragm instead of your up here or whatever. I know my voice has changed a bit. A lot of my friends said, oh God, yeah, we can tell. I can't. <laughs> I love, I'm, I guess I consider myself a girly girl. I love wearing dresses. I really don't like putting on jeans. <laughs> and, and she always brings that up to me. She says, why don't you wear jeans or, you know, those leggings? And I, well, I said, I do wear leggings, but underneath my dress <laughs> when it's too cold. But I love wearing heels. I love makeup. I love everything about being a woman. Everything, everything. I have no, oh, it was so weird. Remember when I finally, my son finally found out, I told him. And <clears throat> the day I went through his clothes and I laid everything out on the bed, everything out on the floor. And I called him over, I said, you've got first dibs, Lewis. You can take whatever you want. I'm getting rid of everything. 
and he took a lot of stuff. And at the time, my neighbor, he was a fireman, he had two sons that were, at the time, big as I was. I'd lost a lot of weight. But I, I called her over and I said, Rose, I said, if you want any of these clothes, you're more than welcome. And she said, are you serious? I said, yeah, take them all. I mean, she knew about me. <clears throat> Matter of fact, she was the first one that ever did a, an actual bra fitting for me because she works at my top drawer. <laughs> so she took a ton of stuff. I had a little bit left, I put it in a green bag. I was going to donate it, but an older couple that I used to visit all the time her cleaning lady had sons, and I just had some kind of raggedy jeans and t-shirts left over, and I told her, I said, look, if your kids can fit up, take them. Whatever you don't want, just donate. I, after that, I had absolutely nothing of my past or of his life. I don't like talking about him because he died a long time ago. And uh, no, I... Uh, I love my life. I do. I don't feel my age, and I don't think I look it. I'm having a, the time of my life.